I'll let you go back to sleep, okay? Hey Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here, aka Shags, with another episode of A Shaggy Duck Life. And I've got a special surprise for you guys today. This is my new little Shaggy Duck Studio mascot. Oh, his name is Graham. He is a mini Aussie Doodle. And he was a surprise that I gave the family for Christmas. So if you're listening to this podcast, please go to Curtis Tucker TV on YouTube and uh, you'll get to see him. I've got him on video there. He is currently asleep and I just picked him up and he's gone back to sleep on my shoulder. But let me see if I can get him to look at the camera real quick. Look at, hey, tell everybody hi. Then I'll put you back down. Good boy. Okay, go back to sleep. Night, night. Go back to sleep, buddy. Night, night. Okay, I'm going to let him go back to sleep, and uh, so today's episode is about Graham, and just going to give you guys a little story of how I got a uh, the family a dog this year, so he was a Christmas present, but let's uh, rewind a little bit. Uh, welcome back to the show, uh, A Shaggy Duck Life, and this is like the uh, first, second, second official episode. Um, so I'm going to get more regular, more stuff, starting to get some new direction. And, um, we have started a second podcast, me and Todd. So you can catch me on, uh, 70s Buzz podcast and also on Buzzhead Radio. That's one that we used to do a long time ago that we are bringing back. And then this is my third one, A Shaggy Duck Life. And so don't forget, this is the old, uh, that Buzz guy, which I've turned into A Shaggy Duck Life. And so... Uh, today's episode, all about dogs, part of the blog, which is at curtistucker.com. One of the sections or one of the categories on, on there will be dealing with a brand new puppy. So if you guys have never had a puppy or if you have uh, and you remember well, uh, check that out. If you have never had a puppy, follow along on the curtistucker.com blog and find out uh, all that is involved. There is a lot of work involved in getting a puppy, and I'd kind of forgotten about that. So, so just to rewind all the way back, uh, we have not, our family has not had a pet for about 11 years. And so my wife and I, when we started dating and got married, she had a little tiny Maltese uh, dog that was, he was older, and his name was Logan, and she had him. So we got married, and he was our pet, and I always called him, rather than like a little dog, he was more like having a cat because, you know, he would just, uh, he would sleep on the back of the couch. Uh, when you went to bed, he would sleep on the, above your head on the pillow. So he, he was so small that carrying him around and having him at the house was more like having a cat around. But anyway, he passed away after, just as the girls um, were born, they were real little and don't even really remember him because they were too little. So we went for a, just a short period of not having a pet. And my wife's dad had come across a King Charles Spaniel at a auction for a church. And to help raise money, he said he would buy us the King Charles Spaniel. And it was a puppy. And so we thought, well, that'll be cool. And this was uh, 11 years ago, or this was probably maybe 12 years ago. And so we got him as a puppy, and we were told that they were great family dogs and they were lap dogs. But we, because we had had Logan, the Maltese, he was older, you know, an older mature dog. We hadn't had a puppy in a long time and had kind of forgotten all this involved with a puppy. So having two girls, which they were, you know, they had, they were maybe two, three, but one was two, one was three. I, I don't know. They were really young. And so having a puppy, he was almost more like having a beagle. He, he just, he jumped around, he jumped on them, he licked, he bit, he chewed everything up. We lost a screen door. We had a huge hole in our backyard that he would dig in and his whole body would go underground and you'd just see dirt coming out of the hole and then he would back out of it and uh, ate all of our shoes and socks. And uh, uh, back then you're 
uh, AirPods for your Apple had cords. He would chew all those up. So anyway, we kept him for about a year, probably less than a year, and he was still in that puppy stage, and we just couldn't couldn't handle him, uh, especially the girls. They they would walk on the furniture. They would go literally f across a room or room to room on the back of furniture because they didn't want to get on the floor because they didn't want him jumping on them. And uh, I had named him Berkeley. So anyway, we found a family that had a home that had some, some room where he could go running. And so we had them adopt him and we got rid of him. And again, that was about 11 years ago. So the girls got older. Um, they were in dance. Uh, we had a lot of stuff going on. And Every now and then, uh, the family would bring up the fact uh, that it might be time to get a dog. And I was usually the one that said, no, you know, we can't go out of town. If we're out of town, we have to find a sitter. Uh, if we have them at the vet over the weekend and they close at, you know, seven or five or whatever on a Sunday, we have to rush back and make sure that we get there in time to pick the dog up. And, you know, there's just so much involved in having a dog. And so I would always kind of poo-poo the idea. And so this went on, on and on and on. And so then we get to uh, this year and it was just uh, about a week, but well, it wasn't even a week. It was like four days before Christmas. So my wife surprised me with uh, a basically pellet, kind of like Sonic Ice, pellet ice making machine for my birthday. Well, my birthday is December 20th, uh, five days before Christmas. And so she did one of those things that, you know, us December babies used to get when we were little. She did kind of a dual gift. She goes, here's your birthday slash Christmas presents, which is a very, very expensive and very, very cool uh, birthday slash Christmas present. So I have my own ice machine one of these days, I'll do a whole episode on good ice and explain that whole thing if you guys don't understand uh, what I'm even talking about or what good ice is. So anyway, you know, that's a huge present. And so I was thinking, you know, she's really outdone me this year. You know, what am I going to get her? Uh, it was a really weird year. Had a lot going on. The girls were not, did not make it to town both at the same time. We didn't even have time to go get a real Christmas tree. We barely got the Christmas decorations up. And we, this is probably the first year in a very long time that we did not go Christmas shopping. You know, normally all four of us would load up and go Christmas shopping and like we'd go to a mall and, and go around and pick out things that we wanted. And then we would pair up and then we'd go back and buy some of the things that one, you know, each other had pointed out, not buying everything, but just a few of them. So we wouldn't know exactly what we we're going to get, but did not do that this year. And so I had zero gift ideas for her. Um, she hadn't really said what she wanted and living in Enid, Oklahoma, which is a population of about 50,000. Our mall has died. There's literally no stores in our mall. Um, and we just really don't have anywhere to shop. So there wasn't really anywhere uh, to actually buy her anything. And so I was racking my brain as to what I was going to get her for Christmas. So then all these ideas started coming together. And, and one of the deals was that, you know, she had spent the last six years taking care of her parents. They had been going through cancer and, and getting old. And so she would spend her evenings with them, helping them cook and eating with them and doing laundry. And then in between that, she would run food to our girls in their dance studio, which wasn't very far away from her parents' house. And so, um, you know, usually I wouldn't see anybody till 8.30, 9 o'clock at night when they would all get home. But so that went on for about six years where she had stuff going on. Um, if she didn't have something going on with them, she would spend maybe the evening with some of the uh, dance girl parents or moms and they would go out and, and hang out and stuff. And so, so she always had something going on, always had somebody to take care of. And unfortunately, uh, just, just less than a year ago, well, a couple of years ago, her mom passed away and then she ended up, her dad kind of got to the point where she had to take care of him. And so uh, for the past couple of years, she's been taking care of him. And unfortunately, uh, just less than a year ago, he passed away. And so this was going to be our first Christmas with her not having either parent around for Christmas. So I knew that was going to be something weighing on her mind. Um, it was going to make Christmas a little empty. 
and she was spending a lot of time after work just with nothing to do uh, because the girls finally graduated high school, went off to college, and so they don't dance anymore. So they, there was nobody to take food to or, or go watch dance. And so literally everything that she had going on in the evenings was gone. And so for some weird reason, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago, I'd been uh, surfing Facebook and I'd, I'd passed one of the other dance moms uh, I was friends with on Facebook. She had posted some pictures of her dog and I thought it was a really cool looking dog. And it was what they call a mini Aussie doodle, a combination of a, an Australian shepherd and a poodle. And I thought, wow, that, you know, I'd never really thought about if, if we ever got another dog, what kind of a dog would I want? But I didn't want another little toy white dog. I wanted something a little bigger, something we could take on the trail, go for walks, uh, throw Frisbee with, you know, something. Uh, and then that was an idea I thought, you know. So then I started thinking, you know, um, at that point, I wasn't thinking about really getting a dog, but I thought if we did get a dog, this would be a cool breed to get. And so in the back of my mind, I knew that that breed of dog was on that Facebook page. And so anyway, fast forward to about, I, th I think we're talking literally three days before Christmas. Um, so I, I got to thinking and it just dawned on me uh, three days before Christmas this year that it might be, it'd be a super duper surprise. Nobody would see it coming. And it might be a cool idea to get my wife a dog. And so living in Enid, Oklahoma, three days before Christmas, um, not knowing what breed, you know, she might want, uh, you know, my, I was limited on what, where I was going to even find a dog. I didn't even know if I could find a dog. So what I did was I went back to that Facebook page where that uh, lady that I had known, uh, where she was, and she had a link to the Facebook page of the people that she got her dog from. And so I clicked on that link. And what do you know, when I got to that link, um, the, there was a 16 year old girl here just a few miles outside of Enid that raises the shepherd and the poodle and breeds them. And then she sells the litters and that's kind of her side business. And they had, uh, I don't know, 10, about 10 weeks earlier, they had had a litter of puppies and they all got sold except for one puppy. And they had just done a post and it said, you know, please somebody adopt, purchase this puppy, uh, you know, for Christmas because he was the only one left. And uh, I thought, you know, it, it maybe it's meant to be because they've got one pep puppy left they're trying to get rid of for Christmas. And here I am in Enid, Oklahoma, have no access to any dogs except this one dog. And so, um, so I email or I messaged on Facebook and I said, hey, I'm interested in that. You know, give me some more information about that dog. And, and she told me about it, told me it was her daughter was raising them, um, kind of described the dog, set the price uh, you know, and all that stuff. And so, you know, I thought, I kind of thought I wanted to do it, but I wasn't super sure. So I said, well, let me think about it. Cause I thought, well, I better, I better sleep on this. Um, and so I told her, let me think about it. And, and if I decide to do it, I'll let you know. Well then, you know, she almost immediately came back with, uh, Hey, you know, if it's price, you know, we can, we can deal on price and uh, this would be a great puppy for your family. And so um, I, I can't remember if it was that night I went ahead and I think it was probably that night I went ahead and messaged her back and said, here's you know what I'm willing to spend. Um, if she's okay with that, let's do it. And she said, yeah, let's do it. And so they came back and said, would you like to meet him? And I said, yeah. And so the next day they drove to Enid and we met in a grocery store uh, parking lot and uh, got to meet him. And of course, you know, he's all puppy and cute and fuzzy. And um, I immediately fell in love and thought, wow, this guy is, is cool. And so I said, OK, you know, I've got to do Christmas shopping and I've got nowhere to keep him. So can you guys keep him tonight and then I'll meet you on Christmas Eve and get him from you? And they said, yeah. So they took him back. 
and uh, they kind of got him prepared and they got a, um, a kind of a little gift package together. And so I did my shopping and, and everything on Christmas Eve and got everything done in about, uh, I, you know, I told my family that I needed to go get some last minute stocking stuffers. And so I think it was about six o'clock and I met the family again and I actually took possession of the puppy. And so I uh, came home and my family is all in the house. So I stick him in a cardboard box. And so my office, Shaggy Duck Studio, is across the courtyard from my actual house. And so you actually have to go out a back door, cross a patio and come into another door into Shaggy Duck Studio. But then in between those two doors, there's a door to our garage. So our garage um, is actually you know, part of the U of a building that, um, that kind of makes our backyard a courtyard. And so I knew I could pull into the garage and they wouldn't see him in the garage. So I put him in a box, cardboard box and I carried the cardboard box from the garage into the studio and, uh, you know, put him down. And I mean, he was all puppy jumping around and biting and licking and, um, just glued to my feet, uh, just wouldn't even let me get, you know, two feet away before he was, uh, you know, connected to my feet. And so I thought, well, if anybody is looking out here or comes out here, they're going to see him jumping around. Plus I had all these presents I needed to wrap. And so every time I set something on the ground, he was all over it. And so, so my office, my, the Shaggy Duck studio is divided. If you're looking on the video camera, you know, into this big area, and then there's a doorway and a brick wall into what used to be kind of the tool shed before we built the studio here. And so I just took the door off and I used that as kind of a storage room and, and just kind of catch all for now. And it's got uh, some great uh, yellow shag carpet in there as well. So I just, I kind of put some pictures and stuff in the doorway to block it and I put him in that room so I could be in this room. Well, uh, you know, not having any memory of puppies or anything, he starts yapping and just screaming bloody murder if I'm not next to him. Even though he can see me, if he wasn't right next to me, he was barking and yapping. So I, I would, you know, reach over and I'd have to pet him and then I would kind of do a little bit of rapping and then he'd start barking and whining and then I'd have to go pet him. And so this went on, you know, for, for an hour or so. And then my family texted me and said, hey, the spaghetti is ready um, in the house. And so I'm thinking, okay, crumb, I've got to go in and eat. What's going to happen to this puppy when I leave him? And I was thinking he's a puppy. So if he goes pee pee or poo poo, because I couldn't let him out or they would see him and I couldn't keep him in the box because he was pretty rowdy and he, he had already climbed out of the box once. So I thought, well, I'll just leave him blocked in that area of my office with my yellow shag carpet and um, I'll just hope for the best. And so I went in to eat and probably spent an hour in there and I couldn't really hear him. I mean, if I, if I got close to the door, I think I might've stepped out one time just, just for something and, you know, and didn't tell them what I was doing and, and I could hear him wailing. But the thing is every house around us you know, both neighbors and both people directly behind us all have dogs and they're always barking and yapping. And so if they had heard him at that point, I don't think they would have known, you know, where the dog yapping was coming from. So anyway, got done and I told my family, okay, I've got to go out and uh, finish wrapping. So do not come out and or you're going to spoil your Christmas. And then my wife had mentioned something about some Christmas Eve services. And, um, I told her, uh, you know, of this one church, they were having like a six o'clock, eight o'clock and 11 o'clock service. And I didn't really pay attention to her saying anything else after that. And so I came out and I started rapping again. And well, first thing is I get out to my, uh, utility room here in Shaggy Duck studio and he has gone poo poo. And I thought if this little puppy goes poo poo, it's going to be a couple of little poo poos and I can pick him up real quick and throw him out the door. But unfortunately he had runny poo poo. And so instead of it being, uh, you know, pieces, it was a pile. And so, 
really having nothing out here, I had to use napkins from uh, restaurants uh, and kind of clean it up. And I cleaned it up as good as I could and, um, you know, dealt with him, uh, you know, squirming and everything. So anyway, so I started rapping again. He kept screaming and barking. And then all of a sudden there's this knock on my window. And I thought, oh, crumb. And this was probably, had gotten to be about 1045. And um, I'm trying to think if the other thing, no, about 1045. And so um, I looked out the window and when I looked out the window, I had to leave him and he couldn't see me. So any second he was gonna start barking because he couldn't see me. Well, it was my daughter at the window and she said, hey, it's time to go to church because it was 1045. And I said, what? I said, I didn't even know we were going to church. And she said, well, mom wanted to go to the 11 o'clock service. And I, and I panicked and I said, I can't go. I said, I've got too much to do here. I said, I can't go. Well, without any explanation, you know, to my wife or my daughter, they went ahead and went. My other daughter um, wasn't feeling well, so she stayed as well, but she was in bed and I think asleep. So she didn't know what was going on. And so, uh, my wife and daughter left. I think my wife was a little miffed, not knowing what was going on. Anyway, that gave me the freedom for an hour to be able to clean up the mess that he had done. Um, I was able to carry some Christmas presents in, get some tape, some things indoors that I needed. I was able to let him out to go pee pee and all that. So then I put him back and then uh, my wife and daughter came back home and I had to go in for something. I think for, well, finally I think I got done um, wrapping all the presents and it was getting pretty late. Um, I think by then maybe it was like 12.30 or one o'clock. And so I thought, okay, everybody inside should be asleep and then I can just go in and finish up some Christmas stuff in there and go to bed. Well, my wife was still awake and she was still wrapping and was gonna have to fill a stocking and she needed something in one of the rooms in the garage. Well, that room butts up with the room that he was in. And so when I went into the house, I was looking for her and I couldn't find her. And I thought, well, where is she? And I noticed the garage door was open. And so I go out there and I look and she is out in the garage. And luckily I had just come in. And so I don't think it had given him enough time to realize that I wasn't coming back. And so he, he didn't start yelping. So I asked her, I said, what are you doing out here? What are you looking for? And when she mentioned something, I said, no, I said, that's not out here. I said, maybe it's here in the house because I was trying to get her in the house as quickly as I could. Otherwise, she was going to hear um, the puppy screaming bloody murder. And I think she would have known because I think the sound would have been a lot different because it would have sounded like it was coming from inside the garage. So anyway, I got her out of the garage pretty quick and, um, and then she was going to stay up and wrap some presents. And so... I went off um, to bed. I'm gonna pause this, hang on one sec. My daughter is heading out here and I don't want to disrupt that. So hang on one sec. Okay, unpause, I am back. Uh, that's the fun part of recording your podcasts at home and not in a studio. But uh, so uh, it's 10 o'clock, my daughter's getting ready to head out and go see her friends. So she just wanted to come out and see Graham. And so uh, before she left, anyway, he is, uh, wouldn't even really get up and see her. He is snoozing. So he's down by my feet. When he's in my studio, he uh, basically has to be right under my feet when he's asleep. So anyway, um, so uh, where I left off was uh, Christmas Eve. Actually, it was Christmas morning because I think by then it was one o'clock. So my wife was finishing up wrapping presents and I went to bed, fingers crossed that she wasn't going to go back out in the garage or hear the dog. And so uh, real quick, when they had gone to church, I had come, gone back into the house a couple times knowing that he was going to start uh, screaming bloody murder and I could actually hear him, but it wasn't loud enough that I, that, you know, most everybody sleeps with TVs or sound on in the house. I knew they probably weren't going to um, hear him, you know, throughout the night. So, and I felt really bad that I was going to leave him out in my studio all by himself. And so I, I left the TV on, um, 
so he'd have light and, you know, something to listen to. So anyway, so I had to leave him, um, got in bed, uh, you know, later on my wife came to bed and normally because the girls are college age, you know, it's not like they come in at six o'clock and wake you up and want to go open presents. And so I think it was about eight o'clock and I knew number one, he probably needed to go potty and number two, that he was out there by himself. So at eight o'clock, I, you know, told my wife, hey, it's time to open presents. And so she got up and we got everything ready in the living room. And um, she said, well, don't wake the girls up yet. I want to make coffee and, and sit down, you know, have a quiet moment. And I'm like, well, let's hurry. And she's like, well, what's the hurry? And I said, well, it's Christmas morning. It's time to open presents. And I, this whole time I'm setting up the camera, which I normally, I just hold the phone in my hand and I record, you know, maybe five minutes and that's it. But um, so this Christmas morning, I'm setting up a tripod and the camera, and I'm trying to get a good angle, and none of this is even dawning on her. And so she sits for about five minutes, and I'm like, look, let, we got to get him up. Let's get him up. And she's like, just hang on, you know. So I said, well, I'm going to go wake him up, because it's going to take them a little while to wake up and want to come in. So I went and woke the girls up, and uh, went back in, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm not really, I can't hear him, so I'm not sure what he's up to. And so the girls do finally come in and, um, you know, they see their Santa gifts and then we open all of our other presents. And, um, you know, I didn't have very many presents uh, because my wife had gotten me the ice machine and then she didn't have very many presents because I'd gotten the puppy and a cage and a dog bed and, you know, a whole bunch of stuff to do with the dog. And so we didn't actually have a whole lot of gifts to open, which made that go pretty quick. And then, um, and so basically we got everything open and I said, okay, I've got it. There's a couple more gifts out in the studio. You know, one act, I did have one that uh, my mom had given us that was big and I hadn't brought it in yet, but I told my wife, I said, um, there's a, a big gift out in the studio for you. I said, but it's so big that I couldn't wrap it. So you guys are going to have to close your eyes when I bring it in and then you guys can turn around. I said, so, so what I was thinking was that uh, this thing that I've got you is something that you can use on the trail. So if you want to go out on the trail, you can use it. And if you don't want to use it, uh, if the girls want to ever go out on a trail, they can use it. And so I got everybody to thinking it was some sort of weird uh, exercise apparatus or something. So I said, okay, I'm going to go out to the studio and get it. Uh, so you guys close your eyes and don't look. And so I came out and man, was he excited. So I got him, he hadn't pooped or anything. I'm, he may have peed. I'm not sure, but, uh, hadn't pooped anymore. And so I put him in that box uh, and, but he was so excited that he was scratching and, um, and I didn't want to sit him on the ground to go to the bathroom because I was afraid they would turn around and see him. So I just went ahead and I brought him in. I carried the box and I carried him. And then when I got in the house, and this is all on video, um, I will upload that video to Curtis Tucker TV if I haven't already, but it's the whole uh, puppy reveal. It, it will be on uh, Curtis Tucker TV on YouTube. Uh, it's a really pretty fun video. So uh, look for that as well. So anyway, so I set the, so they were, they had their eyes closed and they were looking away from the Christmas tree. And so I set the box down and put the puppy inside it. And, you know, it was just tall enough that he couldn't get out really quick. And then I walked behind them and I said, okay, turn around. And they turned around. And I think both of my daughters were kind of on the ground on their knees. And my wife was standing up with coffee. And, and as she looked at the box, he jumped up and it kind of scared her. And so she kind of moved back and said, oh. And then my oldest daughter ran over to the box and realized it was a dog and kind of started petting him and and rubbing his ears and stuff. And then all of a sudden she noticed that it was a puppy and she screamed, it's a puppy. And so she stood up and started screaming and jumping up and down. Well, that caused my other daughter to jump up and try to see what it was. And so she came over. And so they all three uh, got around the box and my wife lifted him out of the box. And of course he was licking and, and squealing and tail was wagging. And unfortunately, because I had left him, um, he needed to pee. So he, he pee peed a little bit on her shirt. And, uh, so I grabbed him real quick, took him out, uh, let him go to the restroom, brought him back in. And, uh, boy, he was the hit 
of Christmas. And so basically, you know, the rest of the day, it was nothing but uh, play with the puppy. And then it came down to, okay, we've got a puppy. And I told my wife, okay, he's um, your puppy, so you have to name him. And so, of course, the girls and I threw a few in. So, you know, tons of names going on throughout the day. Uh, one of the names that she, first names that she really liked was Winston. And so she was thinking about Winston. And so I, and I think I've told you he's a mini Aussie doodle and he is kind of tan and white, um, mostly kind of a tan everywhere, but then he's got white on his belly, on his nose, uh, on the top of his head and then down around by his, his neck. And so my wife thought he looked like a s'more, you know, and a s'more is the two graham crackers with the marshmallow in the middle. And if you do look at him, he does look like a s'more with the marshmallow in the middle, the white, and then the s'mores on the side. And so she thought, um, you know, a graham cracker. And so she thought the name Graham might be a good name. Some of the other names that we were, we were picking out, somebody in the family would say, no, I already know somebody that's got a dog that name or this or that. And so a bunch of names kept getting uh, tossed out. So it did, it came down to Graham and Winston. And so Graham is G-R-A-H-A-M or Winston. And then uh, I think I ran over to see my mom and wish her a uh, Merry Christmas. And by the time I got back, my wife and, and the kids, but I think my wife, they had decided on Graham. And so our new puppy, uh, today he's about, he was born on October 10th, 2021, and today he's somewhere around 12 weeks old. Uh, so anyway, so now we are a dog family again. Um, you know, the first couple of days when you have to take them out a lot and play with them and they're biting and chewing um, and barking, uh, I started questioning my, my thought process and what I had done, but he has been nothing but fun and a great time. And so, um, so like I said, there'll be lots of pictures, lots of stories. Um, I'll update on a Shaggy Duck life because now he's the Shaggy Duck mascot. Um, and I really liked him because he's a shaggy dog. It's kind of that look, that shaggy animal that, that I really like. So he's going to be the shaggy dog of Shaggy Duck. And so, um, you know, one of the first things you learn is, you know, because they're not potty trained, they can't sleep with you at night. So, and I had bought him, a, a, I call it a cage. I hate to call it a cage, but, you know, um, his own little house. And so uh, reading you know, had to read a lot of stuff or reading how to potty train and how to train and all this. And, you know, it said, you know, when they're puppies that young, you need to keep them in your bedroom. And so we uh, put him in the bedroom. And of course, you know, he uh, cries and screams and I put a towel over his cage. And I think the first night he kind of howled and cried for, you know, just a couple of minutes. And then I think he was tired. I don't know. I think he finally went to sleep. And then the next night, he did not go to sleep. And so the second night, I actually had to take his cage and put it on the back porch and close the door. And then I think I had to do that the second night and the third night. And then I read... Well, first I read that, you know, try not to make their cage a punishment. And so I, we started leaving the cage out in other areas where he could go in it and play. And, um, and then I also read that, um, you know, if they feel like they're close to you. So I got the idea of pulling the cage over right next to the bed and sticking my hand in the cage when I put him to sleep. And so that night... Um, I put him in the cage and then I laid beside the cage. Oh, I think my wife had gone out of town and she was spending the night in Norman because my daughter by that time had had to go back to OU. And so I thought, well, I'm going to try this experiment tonight while she's not home. And so I put him in the cage and I laid by the cage with the door open, but I was blocking it so he couldn't get out. And of course he just sat there as staring at me and uh, I kind of was petting him and eventually he kind of laid down and then I shut the cage and he kind of got back up. But then I pulled the cage over to the bed where it was literally within arm's distance. 
and uh, stuck my aunt, my hand, my fingers through the cage. And uh, I think he might have whimpered a couple of times. And then, and then they, the, some of the things that I've read say, don't, don't yell at them because th if you get a response out of them, then they keep howling or whimpering because that's, you know, that's what they're after is a response. So um, I just, I just hit the cage because I'd gotten a little irritated that he wouldn't stop. And I hit the cage. He went immediately silent and that was it. He was done. He didn't make another sound the rest of the night. And so the next night, uh, when my wife had gotten back, uh, did it again. I put him in the cage, laid by him for a minute or two, pulled the cage up to the um, bed, stuck my hand in it, and he went right to sleep. And so um, I think that night, in the middle of the night, I heard him whimper. And I thought, you know, um, if he's whimpering, he's got to go to the bathroom. And so I, you know, threw my house shoes on and there's a door to the outside, luckily, in our bedroom. So I took him out. Of course, he had to go to the restroom, um, brought him back in, put him back in the cage. He went right back to sleep. And um, so then our routine now, so now our routine is, is that, that I put him in, he goes to sleep. And then my wife wakes up uh, probably 45 minutes before I do. Uh, which is like 5.15. She's got to get to the dental office early. So she gets up at 5.15 to start getting ready. Well, the first couple of mornings, that would wake him up. And then he would start whimpering because she was up. And, and then he had to go to the bathroom. So I would get up when she got up and take him out and then bring him back into the house and put him in bed with me because at that point, I knew I only had an hour or thir I had 45 minutes to lay in bed and he had just gone to the bathroom. And so he pretty much would just lay down and, and, and lay beside me on the bed. Um, and so that, so now that's our new routine is, uh, put him in the cage, put my hand, uh, in the cage and he goes right to sleep. And then my wife gets up, I let him out, put him in bed with me. Um, and so now we have a puppy. So we're still going through the potty, uh, training phase. Luckily, he has not pooped in the house again. Uh, we keep on top of him. And, you know, because I work at home and I work in the studio, he hangs out in the studio with me all day. I play with him uh, in the morning. I play with him in the afternoon. Then I play with him, uh, you know, in the evening. But even when I'm not playing with him, he's in here playing with stuff. And then, of course, being a puppy, he does sleep quite a bit. So, like right now, you know, I'm wailing on on this podcast and he's totally asleep, completely ignoring me. Uh, and then a few minutes ago when my daughter came in, he just, he did open his eyes and kind of looked at her, but then he kind of went right back to sleep, which kind of annoys her. She thinks he should be up all the time. So anyway, so we now have a brand new puppy named Graham. He's part of the family. Uh, I'd for, kind of forgotten how much a part of the family dogs actually become, but uh, I think he's pretty cool. I think he'll, they say he may get to be, he's a mini and so he may get to, to be uh, as, as tall as 18 inches, uh, I think as much as 25 pounds, but he could be less than that. You just never know exactly because the mixed breed, you don't know exactly how they're going to turn out. But he will have shaggy hair. Uh, it won't be super curly like a poodle, but it will be kind of uh, wavy, like, you know, just kind of a wavy, which for me is shaggy. It makes him look shaggy. So he, I think he's going to end up being the perfect shaggy duck, shaggy mascot. And so follow along on the curtistucker.com blog where I'll post lots of pictures. Uh, I've been posting pictures on social media. Um, you guys can follow me there, but um, have, uh, so as, as things progress, if you guys are thinking about getting a puppy, um, you know, so, so we went through one dog food and we got him some treats. So, so every time he goes to the restroom, we give him a treat when he comes in and, and really praise him for having gone outside to go to the bathroom. Problem is, it seems like right after we started giving him these like liver flavored treats, um, he had diarrhea. Well, that was a mess. And, uh, we did that for several days until I was like, okay, we can't keep this up. And I even took him to the vet cause I thought, you know, what's going on? And they said, no, he's fine. He's a puppy. Sometimes they do that. Um, so we pulled the food that he was eating and the treats. And then, you know, they say, of course, when you change their food, that can cause diarrhea. But almost immediately after, uh, giving, so we started feeding him science diet and got these new treats that are more like a, a milk bone, 
you know, they're more, they're not soft and livery, they're crunchy and, and more of like a biscuit. And uh, so very quickly got rid of the diarrhea. So we've gone through that. Um, um, he doesn't like the treats as much. He doesn't eat them immediately. He usually just plays with them and then he finally will eat them. But um, so we just put bells on the door. So we're going to train him that when he's got to go out to ring the bell and then we'll let him out. But um, I, I can tell when he's got to go out already just after what I think we've had him uh, just a, a couple of weeks now. Um, he'll whimper. Uh, if he's if he whimpers, I know he needs to go out. Or he'll you know if he starts kind of going off on his own and sniffing a lot, then I know he's he's got to go to the bathroom. And sometimes he just walks up to the door, and uh, you know that he's got to go out and go to the bathroom. And so um, he literally goes to the restroom every time we take him out. And so I take him out a lot, so he doesn't have to worry about that. So we can get him potty trained as quickly as possible. Um, a really smart dog. But anyway. I will go through all of that. I think that'll be a fun part of a shaggy duck life. That is a part of uh, families is having a pet. And again, if you have not ever had a puppy, uh, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work and he chews and he bites and he needs lots of playtime. And so um, definitely don't get a puppy if you live in a house where everybody's gone all day and you're going to have to leave the puppy by himself for like six hours a day or something. Cause that, it just, that, that is not for a puppy. And so again, I work at home and so, um, he's with me all day long. Uh, and of course now it seems like he's my dog rather than my wife. But I think once he gets past the puppy stage and she can take him out on the trail, you know, and he can lay in her lap and he's not jumping around. I think eventually they will have a closer bond right now because he spends a whole day with me. Um, we've got a pretty good bond, but, uh, you know, I'm going to teach him Frisbee and all that stuff. So anyway, point being that on a Shaggy Duck Life podcast and CurtisTucker.com blog, I will keep you guys updated on the progress of Graham. Uh, have some pictures with him. I'll let you guys know uh, things that we train him to do. Uh, any of the things that you might run into if you're thinking about getting a puppy. So, uh, so things that we've purchased so far are toys, dog food, treats, um, a uh, cage to sleep in, bought him a kind of a bed to put in the cage. Uh, what else have we bought him? A collar and a, a leash. And um, I think at this point, then we took him to the vet. The first vet bill basically was kind of a, uh, they kind of looked him over. And then they gave us, um, I think, deworming medicine. And that's a kind of a treat that he chews on. And basically that whole trip together was $71. And so, um, so it, that was nothing major. That was just a, just a regular no-nothing visit. And it was $71. So if you're thinking about having a puppy and you're going to actually, you know, take them to the vet if they need it, you know, that is going to be a cost. Um, he is going to need, his nails are sharp as knives. And so we are going to have to take him to a groomer just to get his nails clipped. We thought about doing it tonight. My wife uh, was a little leery, so she did not clip his nails. So we're going to have to do that. That'll be 30 or 40 bucks. And so, um, so they, they do cost some money. They do take a lot of time and a lot of energy. Um, uh, so anyway, I'll keep you guys updated on that. And I'm going to sign off on this episode for A Shaggy Duck Life. But first, I'm going to remind you guys, you can catch me and Todd. Uh, uh, we, we record Tuesday night, so the episodes come out on every Wednesday. Um, we're about to reach our 200th and 22nd episode. We're, we're over 200 episodes right now. We've been doing it four years. That's 70s Buzz podcast, where every episode we talk about a different aspect of the 1970s uh, because that's when we grew up and that's the uh, decade that I love so much. And then just because we've gotten enough followers that really like listening, but we always start out the show usually talking about other things and people question us about our, you know, my daughters and, and Todd's family and our work and, and whatever we're doing. And so sometimes we end up spending 10 or 15 minutes talking about that. So we thought, well, why don't we start a separate podcast where Todd and I can talk about that stuff and then keep the 70s buzz more geared towards the 70s. And so we have restarted a podcast that we've been doing since 2017 called Buzzhead Radio. And so 
Uh, please subscribe to uh, A Shaggy Duck Life, Buzzhead Radio, and 70s Buzz Podcast, and you can catch me on all three of those. So anyway, I'm going to get out of here. I appreciate you guys. Uh, you can hit me up at curtis at shaggyduck.com and send me any show ideas, anything that you guys uh, can think of. Let me know if you're listening on a podcast platform and A Shaggy Duck Life is not on there. And I will get it on there. And uh, anyway, you guys have a great evening. I'll have uh, plenty of Shaggy Duck swag coming up. I've got uh, something really cool coming out for the book. I am uh, uh, working towards writing uh, Banana Seat Squad. It's going to be a book of me and my buddies growing up in the 70s. It's not going to be nonfiction. It's not going to be, you know, everything real, but everything's going to be based. It's going to be a fiction book, but everything based on things that we did in the 70s. So anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Appreciate you guys, and we will talk to you soon.